We feel a bit like Gulliver, tied down at Lilliput, tied down by a ragtag, motley collection of feeble, footling, feckless politicians, <laughs> all in desperate pursuit of a single unworthy aim, to renege on the solemn promise they made to the British people and to try to cancel the largest single democratic mandate in our history. On the left, not you ladies and gentlemen, on the left, <laughs> we have Jeremy Corbyn, self-avowed Marxist, arguably the most left-wing leader the Labour Party has ever had, who has achieved the most remarkable feat of being even more unpopular on his side than on ours. <laughs> now, Mr... I, 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 I never thought I'd get such applause for Jeremy Corbyn at a Tory party conference. <laughs> um, Mr Corbyn would have the public believe that he is a man of principle. Jeremy Corbyn, a man who spent his career in the division lobbies as a Eurosceptic, with our great heroes, Ian Duncan Smith, Bill Cash and John Redwood, voting against the European Union in his campaign for Remain. And now Corbyn's Surrender Act simply offers more confusion and delay at a cost of £250 million every week. This from the gentleman who has spent the last two years demanding an immediate general election, only now to run away from an election once it would offer to, to him as a model of Georgie Porgy, who you will remember, Georgie Porgy pudding and pie, kissed the girls and made them cry. When the boys came out to play, Jeremy, Qu uh, Jeremy Corbyn ran away. <laughs> ...to lead his country. And behind him, there may be stronger men, like Sir Keir Starmer, poised as if Brutus, stiletto in hand, awaiting the moment to strike, striking, of course, being something the left are quite fond of, <laughs> the supposed mastermind of Labour's Brexit policy, whose much-vaunted helmsmanship has steered the Labour Party into the implausible straits of claiming they want to negotiate a new deal with Brussels, then to campaign against it in a referendum to remain in the European Union. That is Labour logic for you. In friendship false, implacable in hate, resolved to ruin or to rule the state. Those words were from the time of Charles II, and I think they apply to the Labour Party now. But let us not forget the middle muddle where we have Joe Swinson, Liberal Democrat by name, but not by nature. Liberal in accepting the yoke of Brussels. Democratic, perhaps only in her own mind, as a figment of the imagination, because it is they who take the extreme position. They want to cancel Brexit entirely without giving the people a say. And then on the right, we have the, in many ways, admirable Nigel Farage who sent to Brussels, I think, the finest politician we have ever sent to the European Parliament in the form of my sister. <laughs> and and I, shall, I shall report back to Annunciata that she got an even better chair than Jeremy Corbyn at the Tory party conference. <laughs> However, we must not delude ourselves into thinking that a vote for the Brexit party does anything other than increase the risk of be Brexit being cancelled altogether. And then we have the speaker. As a parliamentarian, no, listen, listen, because I'm actually going to be nice about him. But wait. <laughs> As a parliamentarian, I have been and in many ways remain a great admirer of the Speaker. He has helped MPs hold the government to account and to seek redress of grievance. But in my view, he has now flown too close to the sun. And I hope that as he comes to his retirement, he will not allow the good he has done in his earlier years to be forgotten. But his recent mistakes have, to my deepest regret as leader of the House of Commons, damaged the standing of the House in the eyes of the British public to its lowest point in modern history. So, so how can this impasse, created by Mr Corbyn and friends who wish to cancel the referendum, be resolved? Well, it's simple. And this is a Tory party slogan that goes back to Lord Ran Randolph Churchill. We must trust the people. The people have spoken. Ladies and gentlemen, you have spoken. 
we are not your leaders from on high, we are your servants. And it is our responsibility to do what you have willed. Parliament has promised to do it. Over 80% of members of Parliament were elected on a promise to respect the result. And the sovereignty of Parliament does not come out of a void. It comes to Parliament from the people. Yet this Parliament is now holding the people in contempt. Ladies and gentlemen, they are holding you in contempt. So we must have a general election. It is time for a new Parliament. A new egg must be laid that is not addled as this one is. We must trust the people as our opponents do not. And it is only a Conservative government led by our fantastic Prime Minister that can get Brexit done and deliver on the people's genuine priorities because Brexit is a means to an end, not an end in itself. So boosting the NHS, providing more police on the streets, creating more good school places and cutting the cost of living. So let me conclude as I started with Disraeli. Disraeli set out the glorious balance of our constitution. That balance has been disturbed, distorted and displaced. And it is our responsibility to restore that balance once more. And that will be done through a general election, through the good sense of our masters, the British people.